Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be finding the inverse of a function, which is a very interesting function. So we have f of x equals x to the power x, and we're going to find f inverse from here. But wait a minute, does x to the power x have an inverse? Let's go ahead and find out. So to find the inverse of x to the x, we're going to start with the following. First, we're going to set f of x equal to x to the power x, which it already is, right? And then set x to the x equal to y, okay? From here, we're going to do the following. Since f of x equals y, f basically maps x to y, we're going to go ahead and invert this and write it as f inverse of y equals x. Make sense? Awesome. So, and from here, obviously, we can kind of find f inverse of y and then turn it into f inverse of x by replacing the y with x, okay? A lot of substitution here, so bear with me. To be able to solve this problem, here's what we're going to do. Since x to the x equals y, so my goal at the end is get to f inverse of y, we can kind of write this as follows. x to the x equals y, and let's, let's go ahead and ln both sides, okay? This, you can move to the front, bring it down, and write it as x ln x equals ln y. Make sense? Awesome. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to use a very special trick and a very special function for this. Did you know that function before? Let's see. Now, x and ln x, when they are multiplied together, nah, they're okay. But if it's like this, it's actually better. Or if you have something like this, this is definitely better. Why? Because you can apply what is called Lambert's W function on this and find the answer from there. So if I apply Lambert's W function on t to the t, it just gives me the t itself. So this is also called the product log, which you can, you know, prompt in Wolfram Alpha with no spaces and now put the number in parentheses, so on and so forth. Obviously, there are different branches and a lot of continuation, so on and so forth. A lot of interesting stuff about this. You can kind of look it up, but it's called Lambert's W function. So here's what we're going to do, though. We don't have t to the t, so we kind of we kind of have to make that. To make it, we're going to go ahead and take this x and write it as e to the power ln x. That makes sense, right? Now we got our t. t is going to be ln x. So let's go ahead and write this first, ln x multiply by x, which is e to the power ln x, and then this should equal ln y. Here's a good point for us to apply Lambert's W function because we have t e to the t. Do you see that? This is our t, okay? Now, if you apply Lambert's W function on both sides, then you're going to get the following. This is going to output ln x, and it's going to give you Lambert's W function of y, or W of ln y. I mean, I meant ln y, right? And for me, we're supposed to solve for x. Why do we need to solve for x? Let me tell you that. Because remember, our goal was to find f inverse. It doesn't matter which variable is inside, but f inverse needs to be found. So that's going to be equivalent to x at the end, because we switch them around. Okay? So let's go ahead and find or inverted them. Let's go ahead and find x from here. That should be our goal. To find x from l and x, we need to do e to the power of both sides, like this. e to the power of this, maybe use a different color, like e to the power of this equals e to the power of that. Make sense? In other words, e to the power l and x is the same thing as e to the power w of l and y. And that's equal to x. So this should give you the answer. But guess what? This is f inverse of y. Notice that this is a function of y, but we want to write the inverse function in terms of x. So all you have to do is forget about this x, ignore it. You don't need that anymore, and just replace y with x on both sides. That's going to give you f inverse of x equals e to the power w of ln x. So if you're trying to invert this function, then you can go ahead and use this formula. But, however... There is an issue with this, right? Obviously, we'll talk about, talk about that real quick, and that is injectivity. 
you can only invert a function if it's injective on a certain interval. Otherwise, think about y equals x squared. It's not going to have a unique inverse, right? Cool. So here's how we can avoid that problem. You can go ahead and graph x to the x real quick. That should look like this, including the 0, 1, because 0 to the power 0 is 1, right? If you're not convinced, go ahead and check out my video on 0 to the power 0. But anyways, this graph is going to go down and then go, oops, I didn't want that straight line. So the graph is going to go up, go down first and then go up. Obviously, here's the issue. If you don't break it down into two pieces, then in this point, by the way, can be found by looking at the minimum value of x to the x, which can be written as e to the power x ln x. By the way, this is just another way to write it. Differentiate this, set it equal to zero, so on and so forth. That's a different story. But from here, and this is going to be 1, 1, you can basically break it down into two intervals and then consider the inverse of each one. So depending on the inputs and outputs, you're going to have different values. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.